Before we get started, be sure to check out my first video, seven tips for watercolor beginners. You might find your question answered there. With that, let's get into 10 more tips for watercolor beginners. Our first tip is to use waterproof pens. The most important part about mixed media art is making sure your supplies work together. There is nothing worse than using a pen with watercolors that isn't waterproof and watching your whole piece melt away. Thankfully, it's easy to avoid this. Either check your pen to see if it's waterproof or to do a simple test. Lay down your ink and put a wash of watercolor over it. It's that easy. If it stays put, you're good to go. If it smears, it's not waterproof. Personally, I am pretty content with my Sakura Micron Pigma pens. They have never let me down. But the question is how long you should let your pens dry because sometimes you can do a test and immediately put watercolor over them to find that they smear. But that's just because the pen hasn't had time to set yet. It really depends on the pen. Some are instant, some take 30 minutes, some take a day, but it really just depends on what you're putting over the pen and the pen itself. So make sure you test your supplies, which honestly is a tip on its own. Test your supplies together. Tip number two, or this is more of a question, should you line art first or paint first? This is really all up to preference. I actually used to color first because I didn't like the way that watercolor made my line art look faint because it was so thick and chalky. I got better quality paints that weren't so chalky later on and this, this problem pretty much just kind of went away after that. It still shows up if I use colors with cadmium because they aren't as opaque as other watercolors. I do prefer to ink first just so that I have a better idea of where to lay down my colors and it just makes sense for how I work and my, my style of art especially because your pencil has to be very clean to use watercolor on top of it. Because once you put watercolor on top of your pencil, you're basically sealing the pencil down and you can't erase it. I do not sketch very clean enough, so inking first where I can erase my pencil and then put down watercolor is the best process for me. You just gotta figure out what works best for you. Tip number three is how to keep paint inside the lines or better control it. It's simple. Watercolor only goes where you put water. The only reason why watercolor would be spreading on its own is because if the area is wet, or I guess if you aren't using the correct paper, then it might soak in the water a little differently. In that case, you should be using watercolor paper. Easy fix. If you are using watercolor paper, you might have an easier time with a smaller or different shaped brush. This will definitely help you control the watercolor around especially smaller parts and quarters. You always want to work with the correct tools for the job, so smaller details need a smaller brush. Bigger washes require a bigger brush because then you don't have to spend forever painting in a big area. Precision also just takes practice. Tip number four is how to avoid accidental blending or mixing. As I said in the previous tip, watercolor only goes where you put it unless the area is wet. You should have no trouble controlling where your paint goes as long as the surrounding area is dry. As soon as you hit a patch that is even the slightest wet, it's going to spread. This is where patience comes in. You have to wait until your paints are dry or you are going to have a very frustrating time. The good news is watercolor is actually the fastest drying paint, so just remember that as you wait. It could be worse. Another issue could be cheap watercolors. I know this is a theme throughout my tips, but you get what you pay for. Something I've noticed with cheaper, chalkier paints is that because they have such substance to them, they have a tendency to soak in any liquids that touch it, causing unwanted bleeding even when it is completely dry. Something you want to avoid. Tip number five is how to tell when your watercolor is dry. If you are having trouble with your watercolors accidentally bleeding into each other, you might just need a simple way of telling when they are dry. I would suggest against touching it to see if it's still wet as your finger could pick up pigment and then create an area that is lighter than the rest. What I do is I look at my painting from an angle. Wetness tends to be a lot more reflective than something that is dry and matte. So if you see a lot of light reflecting off of your paint, then it's still wet. If it looks matte, then it is still dry. This isn't completely foolproof, so I would definitely suggest waiting longer than you think you need for something to dry. Better safe than sorry, Hey, haha. <laughs> Tip number six is how to speed up the drying process. If you are too impatient to wait for watercolor to dry naturally, or if you have put an absolute puddle onto your page, you can speed up this process by using a heat gun or what most people have in their homes, including me, a hairdryer. 
Heat helps things dry, so use the hot setting, point it at the offending puddle, and it should dry much, much faster. Just be careful not to use the high speed. This will actually send your watercolor flying across the page, which I'm sure you do not want. I suggest starting far away and then seeing how close you can get before you do any damage. Though I have played around with using a hair dryer to manipulate the watercolor and send it flying on purpose because it can create a really cool effect. You can see me do this in my painting with coffee tea and my blood video. Tip number seven is how to put down a smooth flat of color. I sort of covered this in my previous tips video, but I guess it was more about how to prevent hard dried edges. I get a lot of questions about how I put down a wash of color that looks so smooth and not blotchy. I do hate to say this again, but this can be easily solved by using a more quality paint if that is your issue. The chalkier the watercolor, the harder it will be to get a smooth wash of color. This is something I struggled with when I first got into watercolor and I was amazed by the difference when I upgraded. If that isn't your issue, as long as your watercolors are wet, they will spread smoothly. So the less water you add, the harder this will be. Just keep moving the watercolor around the surface and it should dry fairly even. Sometimes you will get a border around the edge if you puddle it too much, but I don't normally find this happening so much to become an issue. And don't forget, practice will always help you get better at this. Tip eight, how to layer your watercolors. This is probably my second most asked question. How do I layer my watercolors without picking up or activating the layer underneath? I think the only way to avoid that is working quickly. If you take your time scrubbing away at the layer below, you are going to reactivate the paint and it will start to blend into your current layer. The faster you work, the less likely it is to become active again. Try to keep your strokes to as few as possible to avoid overworking the previous layers. Again, this is easier with more quality paints. Every time I say that, I feel like a butt, but it is unfortunately what it is. I've also found that certain colors are more prone to reactivating in absolutely no time and not even I can avoid this, especially red. Red is so, so hard to work around. Tip nine, how much water do I use with my watercolor? The amount of water you mix in with your watercolor paints really just depends on how saturated you want your colors to be. There is, however, a limit to how little water you use with your watercolors. Since you can't use dried up watercolor from a pan or straight from the tube because it's just, it's just a glob. But when it comes to adding water, it's really up to you and what you want. I will say the more water you use, the easier it is to spread. But on the other hand, you end up losing pigment with the more water you add. Just mess around with it and see what works best for you and what you are trying to achieve. Unfortunately, I can't really give you a set ratio of watercolor to water. You just gotta see what you gotta do and what works. And it should be good. And our final tip number 10, have a dirty cup of water and a clean cup of water. This is the best tip I got, and a quite common one too. I think this is probably the number one tip for any watercolor artist ever. You need two types of water while working with watercolors. One is dirty, and one is clean. It's simple. The dirty cup is there for you to wash your brush as you work between colors. This keeps all of the mess in one place. The clean cup is there for you to add to your paints and also an additional second rinse for your brushes. This will definitely help keep your watercolors from turning muddy from using dirty water. You want them to stay as bright and vivid and colorful as possible and nothing kills color quite like using dirty water to water your watercolors. So definitely make sure that you have a clean glass and a dirty glass and stay vigilant about cleaning them when you need to. And why not? Here's a bonus tip number 11. Do not drink your dirty water or even your clean water for that. Do not drink your watercolor water by accident. You don't want to do that. It's, it's a bad idea. And there you go. There are my 10 additional watercolor tips for beginners. I hope you guys learned something. Maybe you guys can become a professional now. Until then, watch the other tip video. Watch this video. Practice makes not perfect, but it makes something. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.